Hi guys, welcome to a review of My Kind of Forever. This is by Tracy Borgen, so that's the cover. Um, this is actually in a trilogy. It's the second book in the Trillum Bay series. This is a romance, um, and it's also classified as like a contemporary romance and chiclet. So I would definitely say, well, obviously the romance is there, but one thing I will say that I've enjoyed about this is it is a clean romance. Now, with this particular book, the most explicit thing in this, um, I'm going to say right off, is that the main character name, or the main female character named Brooke, is lusting after the main male character named Leo. And Brooke wants to just squeeze Leo because he's so good looking and she especially wants to squeeze him with her vagina. So that's the most explicit thing in the book you're going to get. Um, there are some funny moments that actually made me really laugh and I don't want to give them away because <laughs> it just like this one scene where things are starting to get a little hot um, but again, it is not explicit in this part particularly. Something happens and it is very funny and I laugh because it would be very embarrassing. So, and it is very embarrassing. So, it was funny. It did have its moments. I What I liked about this one, so Trill and Bay, the first book, what was the first one called? I can't remember. My Kind of, oh, My Kind of You. So, Brooke is a part of the Callahan family. The first book, My Kind of You, follows her younger sister, Emily, who is the middle child of three siblings. Brooke is the eldest. Um, the next book in the series, I will say, I actually just started it, and the, and the third one follows the youngest sister. So, it's not... I do rec highly recommend reading them in order because there are some things that are referred to in the book that follows. So like in this case, My Kind of Forever, there are some things that are mentioned that would spoil some things, especially regarding like the resolution of the first book. Um, and the same thing with this third one that I'm reading now, there's a few things that are mentioned that would spoil the the second book in the series. So definitely read them in order. Um, but obviously, if you can't, just be aware you will be spoiled for the uh, prior book. So My Kind of Forever, we're following, again, the eldest book out of the Callahan sisters. The eldest child name is Brooke. So Brooke lives on Trillum Bay, and this is a very small island. Uh, people know each other. At the start of the book, there's this character that appears that's kind of creepy, gives off bad vibes. Um, he's This character, he states that he is looking for a jewel thief that is supposedly hiding out on Trillum Bay. So of course, with this being a small town, the gossip just spreads. So that is definitely a thing. Secrets are hard to keep in this town. Um, Brooke, in this particular book, if you have not read the first book, I will say stop watching this video <laughs> because I will be mentioning some things that are a part of the second book that will spoil the first one. So if you have not read the first book, which is My Kind of You, stop watching this video and then go read the first one, then come back to this video. So in this particular one, so you have this guy that's looking for this jewel thief. He shows Brooke a, and she's at a post office, so she's talking to the person that works at the post office. Mm -hmm. This guy shows the girls a picture, um, which appears to be a picture from the 1980s about this jewel thief. And of course, you know, they're surprised. How can anyone like that be on the island that they reside on? It is a very tight-knit community. So, Brooke happens to be the new mayor um, of the second book or of this town and that's her career. She used to be a teacher um, and it was a very small school. Of course, it's a small town. So right now she is the mayor and of course as a mayor there are changes that she wants to make. 
and you have to try, she's trying to get, you know, just like any political figure, they try to get people to see things from their side of view. And so you're watching as she kind of tries to control certain meetings as far as get people to listen and not get so drunk at these meetings. Yes, people drink because these meetings are held at the bar. Um, so that was interesting. Um, but that's just what they do. And they drink, you know, whiskey and all sorts of other drinks. Um, the same thing from the first one, and it's referred to quite a bit. Um, there are no cars, and so you're getting around the island by a foot, bike, or horse-drawn carriage, or just a horse. So that's fun. Um, anyway, so you're just following. So there's a new guy on the island named Leo, and he is the one that Brooke wants to squeeze with her the JJ. And, um, <laughs> it's a romance. So obviously you can guess that the sparks are going to fly. The relationship's going to develop. There's going to be something that causes issues in the relationship. Um, and then like most ro romances, you know, you do get a resolution on things. I'm not going to say how things resolve, but you do get a resolution. I... The thing that I like about these, one, again, like I had said, these are clean. Um, so you don't, you do not have ex sexually explicit scenes in the book. Um, you do have a lot of lusting and wondering what someone's going to look like um, and things like that, what they're going to look like naked. Uh, but, you know, that's fine. I'll deal with that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to stop reading a book because of that. But it's very, I don't know, it's just very sweet. I like the relationship because you do see more of the relationship develop between the three sisters um, as the story is continuing. Um, and so I am liking that. Um, I think that's one of my favorite parts is seeing that. One of the, <laughs> the things in the book, um, Grandma Gigi is still very prevalent in this. Um, Let me see. Okay, I am back. So I am uh, just on a short little break, but I'm accepting phone calls right now. Um, so I had to take that phone call for work. Uh, and I realized that one thing, cool thing with my computer is I can actually pause a recording. Anyway, side note. Uh, but anyway, so back to the book, My Kind of Forever. It's just very sweet. There are plenty of tender moments. You still have the character development, and obviously it's more about the development of romance in this. Um, other than that, and the one of the plot lines is regarding the jewel thief, you do get more information about that. There's a couple of funny scenes. One I will mention does take place at the very beginning of the book. So as a new mayor, Brooke is dressed very conservatively. Um, and her sister Emily wants her to be a little bit more sexy looking as her new role and to be able to attract a man type of a thing. And so basically on Brooke's first day as a mayor, she's wearing an outfit that Emily, her sister Emily picked out for her and the shoes are a little too big. Um, and the, the funny scene is this, is she's, her the heel of her high heel gets stuck in a crack and she tries to unwedge it, and the way that she does so makes the shoe fly off of her foot and land in a pile of horse poo. Um, so that was interesting. Um, and that's the point that she meets the love interest Leo in this. And so you watch as the banter is there. Um, some of the points that Leo made was really good. Um, one of them was, you know, sometimes in life you just have to take a leap. You don't know where you'll land, but you know, sometimes you just need to take that basically leap of faith type of a thing. Um, so I like that. Um, I do recommend these. If you want books that do have the spiciness to it, then obviously this series is not going to be for you. But if you do want clean romance, this will be a good series to look into, especially if you like the small town vibes, as this is very much present in that as well. So um, we do have that one thing I did. The other thing I really did like, got another call. Hang on one second. 
Okay, so one other thing I did like is that Brooke talks about how she feels kind of left out, which are feelings that I can very much relate to, how you see people that you know um, and are related to that seem to be progressing in life, seem to be falling in love um, and things like that, but then you're kind of left in the dust because things just haven't ever worked out. And so you feel you're happy for them, but you do have that little bit of a jealousy and you do feel a little left out, but then you have that inner struggle with making sure you're showing the happiness for them but also recognizing that you're, you're not um, showing the jealousness. So uh, that is going to be it for this review. I ended up giving this book four stars. So that's it. Until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.